I never gave up the painting. A lot of guys gave up the painting. They just gave it up and said, I can't do this. But I thought, I got to a point where I said, I think I can juggle both of these. Either I, I structure the time to do it in the evenings, or then I won't do it at all. I um, uh, ended up working in the advertising business, which I've done up until this point. I realized that if I was going to continue to paint, it, wouldn't, it would have to be in the evening after the, the boys were put to bed and, and whatever. So I've, that's my routine. Even now, the boys are all grown up. They've moved out. Um, I still work mostly in the evening after, after I get home from work. So, um, so that's, that's worked out pretty well. When I was growing up, there was, uh, you know, a lot of um, Davy Crockett, and there was a lot of stuff relating to the West, you know, Western movies, and I liked history. I always, I've had a real love of American history and the mythology surrounding history, and I think over the course of time, uh, some of that, even more so now, has played into my, into my work now. I've done a series called Contemporary American Portraits, which a basically study of black and white photographs and historical figures. And with the big portraits, um, the photograph is very important. Like I think Jasper John said, we look at things, but we don't really explore them. We really don't look at them. By taking some of these small black and white photos of Lincoln and some of these other historical figures, and then taking them and blowing them up, really getting close and looking at them and seeing all the, the cracks and, you know, the warts on the faces and stuff. It gives you a whole different perspective of what this face, what, who this person was. I think it's important for artists to explore different areas. I think if, you, if an artist looks at his work 10 years down the road and it's exactly the same thing that he's been doing and it hasn't changed, then I think he's really got to look closely at what he's doing or look closer at the world around him and try to figure out there's got to be something a little more, I should say. But even things like, you know, baseball. Baseball was played during the Civil War and a lot of the uh, prison camps and a lot of the soldiers picked up the game uh, so, you know, it, it, talking about history connecting like baseball, okay, what's it got to do with history? Well, it, it comes out of like, you know, right about the time of the Civil War and they play it in the camps and stuff and then they go back home, they, the game starts to spread. So you've got this whole, you know, thread that runs through history. All these things are kind of connected one way or another, which I find very fascinating. In the arts, history is almost a taboo subject. A lot of artists don't like to touch it. They, they stay away from it. Uh, and, um, and I've never totally understood that because you've got history writers write about history. Um, filmmakers make films about history. Uh, and yet when a painter goes near historical subjects, usually it's almost like a taboo thing. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be painting that. You should be doing your know, landscapes or your still lifes. Uh, and so, um, but I've kind of ignored that over the years. I've learned that um, you've got to do, you've got to paint what you have a love for and a connection with. I think it was 1957 when they had the first, uh, when the Russians put up Sputnik, which was the first 
space object ever in space. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Here, an artist's conception of how the feat was accomplished. We were living in a three-decker apartment in, on uh, Pearl Street in Providence, and my mother dressed us up that night. It was a cold winter night, and we climbed up through a sk skylight on the third floor, and we actually saw the little blinking light, the Sputnik, go by, which was kind of cool. One of the great scientific feats of the age. Back in 1960, when, the, when they were starting with some of the uh, launches, for, uh, I think it was Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs, uh, someone in the government got a very smart idea, which is unusual. Why don't we document the space program through the eyes of, of artists, painters, sculptors, musicians? And so they started this program called the NASA Space Art Program. And I'm thinking, Peter Campbell from Lincoln, Rhode Island, he probably doesn't have a shot. It taught me not to, not to sell myself short because I could have easily said, well, I don't have a chance in getting into the program, so I won't even bother. But I did. I, I sent it in and, and I got into the program. So it's like it, it taught me a good lesson about never, you know, just go for it. Don't, don't think about, you know, don't create the walls or the barriers, but, you know, pursue it. Here I was, you know, documenting a, a historical event uh, and now as, as it goes, we don't even have a space shuttle program anymore. So, I mean, so to be involved in something like that, actually a piece of history, uh, was pretty exciting. And I did a piece for the collection, which is uh, called uh, Voyage to Venus. And uh, it hangs in the, in the NASA uh, Space Art Collection down at Cape Kennedy uh, Space Center. So that was kind of cool, having a, a piece actually in a collection. Every artist has has his collection of sketchbooks and some of these, you know, un ideas, doodles. I always have doodles. All I have them stuck in my pocket. Sometimes, you know, I sometimes even at work, <clears throat> I may think of an uh, an idea may hit me, and you know, I'll do some real quick uh, sketches, uh, just an outline. And most people would look at it and would it would look it looks like a crazy man was doodling or something, but to me, it's just it's a shorthand. Uh, and, and it's just something I can, I can go back to if I have an idea. But um, a lot of times um, you put down a concept in a sketchbook, you forget about it, you go back later. Uh, this is one called um, The Final Solution, which um, is a painting that I did do from this sketch, which was done from some of the um, photographs of the uh, massacre uh, of the uh, Sioux uh, Indians at Wounded Knee. You know, it's a lot of doodling. Um, you know, some of these are older, some of these are older sketches, taking notes on some of the faces. Um, that's me when I was younger, when I had hair. <laughs> God. Hopefully a lot of artists are, are doing this and not making the mistake of using the computer. This, I think, is, is one of the best ways to approach an, an idea or a concept. So that's pretty much uh, along the lines of the um, sketchbooks and ideas and, and whatever. And then I've always got piles of uh, other things. I've got, you know, all kinds of imagery that, um, you know, ideas, faces, more faces <laughs> that I'm using as a reference. Exploring these faces is, uh, is what I, I do like to do in this series. Whether you're an artist, um, whether you um, make furniture, whatever you do in your life, it could be a bricklayer. I mean, I think it's how you approach what you do in life. And this is, to me, is a, it's almost like, well, people always say, well, oh, you must love it. You go in your studio at night and you paint, you know, and it must be fun. And I go, well, a lot of times it's not. I said, it's, there's a lot of, it's a, a lot of work to painting. It's a, it's a craft, it's a skill. And you have to spend a lot of time doing it. And it's like any other profession, it takes a lot of time. You have to work at it. It's like you have to learn the trade, you have to learn how to do it correctly. 
mixing your colors, um, all those kind of things, stretching canvases. Um, this is part of the craft that you have to learn. It's part of who I am, um, and, and people learn to accept you for that. Um, so, so I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, to me it's a natural thing. It's, you know, how I, how I do things, and I think like other people have their own ways of expressing themselves, even if it's in the, you know, everyday job that they have. It's not all on how you look at it.